with a bunch of uh, fellow artists and thinkers and creators and performers. And tonight um, we are doing a, uh, okay, yeah, so we relate. Sorry about that if you're joining us online. Uh, sorry about that if you're joining us in Zoom. The people in the room know that we're uh, moving forward. So um, tonight we're gonna have two performances that are gonna happen, one here in this room after I'm done speaking, and the next one will happen in uh, New York in the Culture Hub studio at 47 Great Jones Street. And then we will have a long table discussion, uh, which will have both participants in, studi in, in our room here at UK Petrobrod in Belgrade, in Culture Hub New York, and online in our Zoom room from around the world. So. And, and we'll also play a, a video for you that Billy just told me to uh, announce. So um, let's go to this first performance. We have Shauna Davis and Maria Kuvacina. So here we go. <laughs>
Shana. What's up? How do you feel now? Any like, changes? How about now? How do you feel, Shauna? Will you ever tell me?
uh, some energy. So uh, next, we're going to have a performance uh, from Culture Hub New York by Thierry Kananaruk, who is a uh, past resident artist at Culture Hub, and Sebastian Morales. And together, they are Morakana. So if we're ready to go, we will see. All right, so Thierry and Sebastian, here we go.
And the experiment is complete. Um, that was Thierry Kananaruk and Sebastian Morales. Yeah, let's give them a hand in Serbia. <laughs> Live from the micro world. Um, and next, uh, before we have our long table discussion with participants in this room and on Zoom, we have one more uh, pre recorded uh, performance or video to play for you uh, called Avalon by uh, Anastasia Vorobiova. So let us go.
Hi, we're here in Serbia. This is our street. Billy is showing you our street in Serbia. And um, cool, so here we are on, uh, on Zoom with some folks. Um, and maybe we can just start by uh, introducing different people on, uh, on, on Zoom. So, you know, tonight it's a, it's a long table conversation. And the long table conversation is an unmoderated discussion. It's a format that was originated by Lois Weaver of Split Riches. And um, in a long table conversation, the, um, you know, the, uh, there, is, there is no, there's no moderation. A host may assist you. Uh, like saying pass the potatoes, but um, this is a free-flowing conversation. Ideally, we would all be in one room together, but this is a hybrid world. Um, so, and tonight we're t we're talking about the uh, the the sort of subject theme of this convening overall, which is solidarity, digital strategies for creative resilience. Um, and tonight specifically, we've brought people uh, together who have been experimenting with a lot of different ways of collaborating throughout the pandemic. Um, yesterday we were talking a little bit more about this, like, well, we were talking about a lot of things, but we were talking more about the downtown variety style of collaborating and the folks that are in this room have been exploring different platforms. Um, and so I think first I wanna maybe, let's see, we got Andrea, with our like three me's here. I think first I would love to uh, toss it over to Andrea to maybe, um, introduce yourself and sort of welcome us and maybe kick us off with some questions or thoughts or, or whatever you've been thinking about lately. Andrea, me? Yeah, you. <laughs> In, uh, yeah, it's also no, it, like, what time is it there, by the way, also? Now it's 2.50 a.m., so it's Perfect. still early. And uh, hello, everybody. I'm really happy to visit you again from Seoul, Korea. I am a part of Culture Hub, and I help in the relation with Europe. And I am in Korea, where I teach at the Seoul Institute of the Arts in the Performing Art uh, School. And um, well, I. I participated also the other night, and uh, I don't know if this question now fits in the context of the situation, but I was curious to know more about the people that were in, Ser in Serbia, in Belgrade in particular, all the guests that you have there. So if during this evening there is some time that we can see them more and hear their voices, that would be really great. Sounds stellar. Um, just, uh, just a note about where we are, where we're at. We've been working together since like 10 a.m. this morning. So, you know, a few people might have stepped out to have a cigarette, uh, but we've got, we've got some folks in the room here. Uh, we have, and, and yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get them all, all in here uh, chatting. Okay, so I think let's uh, officially begin the long table. I'm gonna read from my uh, menu of long table etiquette and then we'll begin the timer. Uh, so this is a performance of a dinner table conversation. Anyone seated at the table is a guest performer, including on Zoom. Talk is the only course. No one will moderate you, but a host may assist you. It is a democracy. To participate, simply take an empty seat at the table. If the table is full, you can request a seat. If you leave the table, you can come back again and again. Feel free to write your comments on the tablecloth. There can be silence, there might be awkwardness, there could always be laughter. There is an end, but no conclusion. And uh, with that, I'll let anybody kick us off who wants to. And introduce yourself as we go. Hey, this is Billy. You can't see me because I'm operating the camera, but um, <laughs> yeah, that's me. Um, but 
I just want to say also that uh, I think everyone, everyone that's here, um, uh, es especially in the in the Zoom call, has been doing some sort of work during the pandemic online, and so it would be really wonderful to hear about that work and to hear about some of the um, the positive discoveries. You know, uh, where you feel that there is room to lean more into the online space. Um, you know, uh, in particular, um, uh, I know there are some folks that have been working from La Mama across a lot of different regions, working with refugees. Uh, I see Aiden out there uh, who's been developing a new 3D platform, browser-based platform. Um, you know, Thierry and Seb, you guys have been producing online stuff, Iris out in Cultural Ballet, you know, Asher, I see you over there as well, and um, <laughs> great to see you. Uh, thanks for joining, and, and I know that uh, Hyphen Hub has been doing some interesting work and working with some artists that have been thinking about these things. So I think you know, it can be really informal just um, telling us a little bit about what's been going on and, and to help us percolate the conversation. Hi all, um, I'm Olivia, um, and one of the things I do is create an online synthesizer called Hydra, um, and uh, there's also, I've been doing this for the past three years, and there's this online community around the world of people who use it, and um, it's been, since I started making it three years ago, and then people started using it all over the world, I started just meeting them online and never meeting them in person, and so in some ways the community around Hydra is an online first community, but then that for me has turned sometimes into um, in-person relationships. Um, and I think during the pandemic, I've really leaned a lot less into my own artistic practice in terms of my own performative practice and a lot more into a practice of, ki of kind of creating some sort of online spaces and meetups for that community and um, just kind of encouraging people to like write their own functions to add on to the thing and the, even just the code itself. I've seen people just meet each other like between Indonesia and Peru just because one person write a function and someone else use that function um, and people from graphic design or from theater and and um, for me I've been especially during the pandemic I guess just much more inspired by figuring out the ways that I can um, create spaces even in sort of a DIY sense for people to like meet and share whatever they're doing so that's my short introduction to myself <laughs> How does that collaboration work? Like someone, sorry, writes part of something and then how do they have, do collaborators have to ask for permission or is there a dialogue outside of the actual code itself? Like and how does that community foster? That's a really good and sometimes complicated question also as you've, as those of you who are in the workshop today saw kind of there's a lot of sketches online and pe a lot of people share what they make online but then sometimes people kind of copy other people's code and change it a little bit um, and it's something that I think is inherent to almost all digital technology in some way of your a lot of times you're copying something that someone else does and I don't have all the answers in terms of like when if you um, use something that someone else does when when it's kind of uh, just taking what they've done or when it's like this remix thing but the more I think within Hydra it's creating kind of a community of people who can all contribute to sharing knowledge around what they're doing and um, Especially with that, I've been really a fan of kind of asynchronous forms of collaboration. So not this video chat where you all have to join the same time, but this like, oh, I made this one thing. I shared it online. Someone else uses it somewhere else. Um, and then through that, 
um, those people meet each other. And actually, in the code, people leave comments a lot. And um, it's something that we've kind of perpe perpetuated a little bit, is when you write a piece of code in the comments, say, Olivia wrote this piece of code. And then someone else will even, I've seen people perform live, and in their code, they say, like, this piece of code from so-and-so, this piece of code from so-and-so. And I think sometimes that's a form of collaboration that wouldn't exist in a physical space, but in this online space, it's like, oh, we're all building this thing together and we don't know exactly where it will go, but people take it in different directions. I mean, I feel like I relate this sort of to dance, right? Like. Sean, I feel like whoever you've trained with, like there are certain movement vocabularies or styles that have come from different uh, teachers or lineages, and those all sort of like live in each dancer differently. But yeah, you can't like uh, footnote it necessarily in a dance, but uh, but it's like a similar sort of concept. It feels. Hi, um, I'm Merata, I'm in Athens at the moment. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, good. So um, I was, uh, um, I feel like I'm part of a group of uh, creators uh, in the virtual world and the two of them are here, uh, Oni and Sara. And the third one is Yolanda Markopoulou. We created together a piece uh, online with refugees. Maybe they can say a bit more about it later. Um, I would just like to put a question. Uh, do cables have a heartbeat? Um, and just to echo a bit what I just heard, uh, that during the pandemic, I have found it very interesting to see how, um, how the way that people work online and mainly in the developer's world, there is this uh, whole ethics of commons and peer-to-peer -peer that is very interesting. Now with performing arts going online, I'm finding it very interesting that we are getting a lot of infiltration of this kind of logic. So what um, the colleague just uh, described um, is very interesting that in performing arts, I find sometimes in theater or dance, there is a different hierarchy and different dynamics uh, when it comes to production. And it's very interesting to borrow a lot from people who work with digital, with coding, where the community is really, really open when it comes to uh, intellectual property. So for me, this has been super interesting how um, as uh, people creating perform like a performance that is, let's say, I will quote it like a product, like how do you sign, how do you co-create, how does this space, how does this virtual space create also a different power dynamic in terms of how do we bring ideas together. And I think it's a very interesting journey. I'm finding that right now we're getting a lot of uh, new interesting hybrids that are being informed by this type of working online where, for example, with Oni and Sarah, we've never met uh, in flesh and we've been working together for a while and just to take it back to the heartbeat there's a lot of love that comes from this uh, work uh, even though um, we've never been in the same rehearsal space so yeah just sharing that as an intro and it's very hot in Athens by the way Hi, um, I don't know. Uh, I'm Asher. I'm from um, I'm from New York. Uh, I'm in Colombia originally, but uh, I run Hyphen Hub, which is an arts and technology organization focusing on emerging tech and with a strong focus on performance, like performance, but also art salons, exhibitions. And uh, first of all, I want to thank Billy for inviting me to be part of this. Uh, um, I love Billy. And, and it's just, uh, we have done some great um, collaborations in uh, La Mama at Culture Hub. Um, we created our first, launched our festival there, Visions of the Future, which is a kind of a, a more 
elaborated type of performance that we that we do usually are our salons, where the salons are more like a exploratory lab, laboratory to explore new forms of uh, technologies, performances, and all kind of stuff. And I also want to say hello to Olivia. Uh, last time I saw Olivia was in Bogota, and uh, and just um, so it's very very glad, very happy to see her here. And so I just um, want to say the the pandemic was pretty interesting for us because um, uh, since I, I do a lot of uh, art salons, and uh, which are kind of the the way to, to sustain the community. We have a global community of artists, creators, create creative tech people. Uh, cultural producers, curators, etc. And uh, we do the salons and it becomes like a, a family. The, um, and everybody just pre present their works, you get criticism, you meet people in a very horizontal structure, uh, non-hierarchical. <clears throat> and it just, and from there many, many things spread out, you know, partnerships with uh, institutions all over the world. And is um, in, you know, exhibitions and many, many projects. But, uh, so this year, because of the closures, and we got invited to participate in a lot of uh, international festivals and even art fairs, uh, but, uh, but everything went online virtually. So we, um, so we usually go there physically, you know, I go with a group of people that I, I invite, that I bring as part of Hyphen Hub, and we do all the performance installations and so on. But it was, uh, this year was all digital. So we created actually a content that was made for digital, uh, for digital sphere, instead of trying to just uh, present things that were done physically and show them online. Uh, so we, we focused a lot on social VR. And it was, uh, so artists that were working on Mozilla Hub and also other platforms that some other people are developing uh, especially from uh, Berkeley University of California, Berkeley. Um, so there have been like two platforms that they are developing for artistic practices that are mostly focused on performance. So we, uh, so I invited all these people to talk about the whole process and um, and uh, show do performances uh, within the Mozilla Hubs. And with one particular artist from New York, Claudia Hart, uh, who's a pioneer in new media, she started. Uh, working with VR since the early 90s. Uh, with Claudia, for example, we developed a theatrical piece for Mozilla Hubs, uh, which was very, very interesting. And it was, uh, it was, it came out of a, she did a, because her exhibition at a gallery was going, well, got closed because of COVID. Um, so she, 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 she created this uh, Mozilla Hub installation of the, of the exhibition and um, invited me to see it. And I just told her, I, she said, what do you think of it? And I said, well, you know, I come from the world of performance. So what about if we do some type of performance within this space to activate it and bring people to it? She said, that's a great idea. And then and we started developing this thing and it was, uh, uh, we decided to create something out of the spoken word where uh, uh, inviting people that were not necessarily from the art world uh, but uh, who were like from the from the writing world, poets or um, or other people, you know, who write uh, other types of books and taking essays from there, who that will dialogue with the exhibition. Um, and it was um, the exhibition was about uh, the the book The Prince by Niccolò Machiavelli from the 1500s. So it was a political thing. So it was a uh, very very interesting because. Everybody who we invited to participate in create pieces, I mentioned, were not coming from the digital world. They were not artists. They were not, you know, in the traditional way. So, so we had to teach them how to perform as an as an avatar. Everybody had an uh, avatar that they selected, and, and and they had to be like very responsive and active. Uh, and it was um, so it was quite interesting the the, the result. And I think like, uh, you know, social VR was, uh, I mean, I'm also a new, newbie in social VR, but I uh, got deeper and deeper as a, I saw it as a way to really expand and connect with people in a, being in a room, you know, with people from all over the world in a, in a very fun way. Like, a, so that was kind of my, my experiences that, that I say for the moment.
Uh, hi, I'm Aiden. I'm here in uh, Brooklyn, New York. And I just have a, a couple thoughts about um, what you all have said so far, which is that um, one of the things that, that uh, occurs to me is that so much of the, the actual um, so much of the actual work is not the work that ends up on, on stage, whatever form that stage takes, but is the work of, of the sharing of code, of the work that happens in the rehearsal room, even if that's a Zoom room, and of the work that happens in um, a social VR space. Um, and I think a lot of what I've been trying to work on this year sort of starts with that understanding that understanding that um, what we're trying to achieve is more than put something on stage and have people watch it, which something like um, a broadcast mode of performance does quite well, but is, is to build a space where a certain type of conversation can happen. And I think that's why this long table format is interesting. I hadn't heard of it before. Um, before I read the description today. Um, and I think that's why finding whatever different formats um, we're, we're seeking is really interesting for performance to be about more than the performance itself, but about everything around it. Um, my approach to that this year has been uh, to, <laughs> has been sort of a literal take on what, what a theater space provides in terms of creating a, uh, a 3D space online where, where people can connect um, using, using a, a webcam. Uh, so it's sort of a literal take on what it's like to be in a, a shared physical space, but in the virtual space. Um, but I think beyond that, there are just so many different ways as we're hearing to um, to get at that that spirit of um, sharing more than just the sixty minutes on stage, but sharing everything before, everything after, all the conversations around it. Hi. Yeah. Um, hi, my name is Thierry Kananurak. I'm Sebastian Morales. Um, I, uh, I was a resident at Kajahab, um, the 2019, 2020, which um, I developed the performance piece and it has to be, um, it's like right before pandemic and then we have to move everything online. And, and with, the help of Culture Hub and Life Lab it's made it possible, which beyond beyond make the performance possible, it's also something that I never thought before. For example, like this, right now we have a performance at Serbia. Like we can perform collaboratively with a lot of people who not live together. So that one thing that I think is is a new perspective for me. And um, um, besides doing my own performance. I also collaborate with my partner, having Morakana, and uh, we also have, I also have another collab, uh, collective called Nuam Collective, which we have a performer in China and we made it possible with the technology. And I guess this is, this is something that we been think a lot during the pandemic that without the technology, we might not win Sybil which it come to this piece, the idea of um, like we've been, we've been isolated. Yeah, I, th I think that part of this piece started in the early days of the pandemic where we were really, uh, I guess, stuck in one place and uh, our experience, experience of the world really got uh, abstracted to what you could see in between panes of glasses, between screens and networks. Uh, so this piece, uh, was very relevant at the time. We were thinking of how 
we cannot exist without being mediated through technology. Uh, and our, all our experience of, of reality was, at the time, very much mediated through, through the technology between uh, cameras and lenses and lights. Uh, so we were playing it with a sense of scale in, in, in many, I guess, ways, some literal, some uh, more abstract. Yeah, we were, we were looking at the drop of water and it's like, wow, there's so many activity inside there. It's like us, it's been isolated in a white box. But inside that white box, like so many people doing so many things, like some people teaching, some people learn life lab to make a, make a performance possible, some people doing dancing. And then with that, like Wi-Fi and, and screen and like make things visible. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the, with the light and creature in, the, in just like one centimeter um, drop of water. Hi, everybody. Hi. I don't even know how to come into the conversation. Hi, I'm Ani, and um, I just was working with Sara and Erato on this piece that Culture Hub helped us present. Um, and everything that, all, all these ideas that people are throwing together now um, made me think about how I, I, I am not a spokesperson for the technological wonders that you are all involved in. I don't know what you're talking about when you say that you're sharing code. I don't know what social VR is, but what I was, sorry, but what I was thinking was that um, it, we just did this piece where we were working with um, relocated um, individuals, um, some of whom are living in Athens now, some of whom are uh, living in Italy and some who are stuck on the Tijuana border in the United States, um, trying to get into the United States. And the, um, so not only was this a group of, of uh, individuals who um, were meeting uh, because there was the techno technology available to meet at the time, but these are individuals who probably will, no matter what the COVID situation is, they will never meet because they will probably never again in their lifetimes be in a position to be able to travel. They have, uh, the, their legal status may never be established in the places where they are. So they were meeting and um, uh, so they were meeting, it, it, was, it was pretty amazing. So that was, I mean, that was sort of a human value for, for what, what could happen online. Um, but I was also thinking of another thing, which was, and I, and I heard it from Olivia and I heard it from Aiden as well, that, um, that, that, that we are, particularly if we come from the theater world, we're used to um, working on something to, to present a product. Like you do your rehearsals and, you, and then on such and such a date, you are presenting your product and then that's what it is. But often the really the most vital part of what it sounds like everybody is doing, and certainly what we were doing was the process. Um, it, the process was so rich and it was so amazing, but it also, it, it brought up this thing, well, what, what is the role of the audience if, if it's process? Because it's not 100% satisfactory to be watching the process from the outside looking in. Um, do, do we do we eradicate the audience? Do we um, do we? Uh, and certainly, we've tried to find a way to involve the audience. We we didn't we didn't figure it out. But I mean, we were thinking: is it possible? So that's a that's a question, and that's a direction because it's really kind of a redefinition of performance, as far as I can see. If I can add to that, Oni, I think it, the very interesting part was that on one hand is what you're saying that what is the audience, where is the audience, and what are they doing when they're watching, if they're in their kitchen and watching five minutes or if they're actually involved. So I think the involvement of the audience is a great, is a, is a great shift in, uh, in online work. And I think the other, the other part that was really exciting was that we were working with these people with bad connections, they were using their phones, 
So some of them were not. So we were using Zoom as a as a as a, an environment, and it was very interesting that they had a very partial experience of what our shared space was because you can only see four people at a time, right? And they also had to perform, they had their cues, but they also had to switch on their camera, switch it off, you know, like they were actually doing a, a big part of the technical side as well. And that definitely also shifts the role of the performer as well. Like what does a performer do? Like they're actually setting, I remember uh, discussing at some point that it's almost like trying to go up a staircase and you're building the stairs as you go up. So for them, it was really quite a challenge. Uh, they did an amazing job, you know. It's, one of them was, uh, uh, in the first piece, was outdoors, uh, walking on the streets with his mask on uh, and doing everything with his phone. So yeah, definitely quite an interesting way of shifting the roles and trying some other ways uh, than the usual audience, performers, directors kind of you know, I, f I feel like something's brewing for Andrea. Well, thank you for calling me in. It's just that I'm thinking because I share the same questions and uh, so I'm trying to shift my point of view and thinking of myself as an audience when I'm watching something online <clears throat> and um, and I must say that, you know, sometimes I get bored quickly. I skim through things, especially if it was already done and I'm watching a pre-recorded version. So, so that is like a sort of interaction in a way with the artwork already in a simple way where I can uh, choose what, what I see. But um, what I found most exciting is that <laughs> it happened that I watched performances while driving my car in traffic. So I put the phone <laughs> in front of my dashboard and I'm driving and I'm watching a performance. And, and, uh, and I found that uh, quite, quite interesting. Of course, during this uh, COVID time, there has been so much that has been posted that uh, we have been overwhelmed by all of it. But uh, this has also pushed a lot uh, to try to find new structures, new dramaturgies, new idea to, to share uh, work online. Uh, here in Soul Arts, I've been able to participate in several projects uh, in the last few years, some pre-COVID and some after COVID. And um, just before COVID started, uh, with, together with another um, director uh, who's raised, based in Italy, but he's originally from the United States, we, we thought that, uh, I mean, maybe it's a very simple and obvi obvious observation, but our lives has been already happening online for several years now. Maybe people that are living away from their homes or from their families or from their friends, they experience that more like expats or nomads or refugees. But uh, a lot of our attempt to reconnect to the people that we care and a lot of these also emotional exchanges and dealing with crisis over distance and it has happened online. And uh, so it is, inevitable that this platform becomes part of the creative uh, work of artists because it's in our lives. And so uh, that was one, one of the considerations that stimulated us to research real stories about people that try to overcome the distance creatively. And there are stories of filmmakers that created films that won Cannes Festival or uh, writer that, that wrote a book through WhatsApp messages that won a prestigious award in Australia, as well as stories of, of people that got lost on their way to, to Europe. But, um, uh, but it's true, this aspect of, of life online. And so this, this dimension is an extension of our physical space 
and it's a place that we inhabit. So, and lately with Aiden, I was able to um, accompany a group of students to work in his 3D space because there was a new wave of COVID and we had to move our classes online completely. So we asked Aiden to support us in this process. And, um, and it is interesting the fact that spaces like this can become synchronous and asynchronous spaces for creation. You can put your work there and then someone else can see it at another time or you can meet there. And um, it's not always easy. There is always technical issues, but without any doubt, there are some forms that are developing and maybe things cannot last two hours or one hour and a half. Maybe things can be much shorter. Like my talk, you should cut me also. Uh, <laughs> but there is something that we are maybe here for, you know, the, the work, the word works. We are really researching uh, something new and somehow I think uh, somebody was making the, the example of building the stairs while you're going up. That's always been what experimental theater people did. I mean, when the La Mama troupe was working with Andre Serban on the Greek trilogy, they probably didn't really know how the stairs was going to be. Well, Ani and can they, speak to that directly found it too. Step by step. Sorry? Ani can speak to that directly, I think. I was looking at her yeah, while yeah. saying it. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> um, uh, as it, people, just from my memory, a hundred years ago, we, we didn't know what we were making. We were but we were working towards, uh, we had a long time to do it, um, but we were working towards a product. So, um, but I, I was actually, when, when, I, when, when we were watching the piece, Kiri and um, um, your partner, Kiri, I'm sorry, that um, I suddenly was thinking about the, um, when, when uh, people were writing, forgive me, but this is history, but when people were starting to experiment with electronic music in the, um, in the 60s and the Moog synthesizer was just coming out and, and, um, th and the people were creating music um, and putting it out there as music and there were pieces that went on endlessly and really challenged people's ears and um, it was it was also at that time about process, the process of it, like how did, how, what was the technological process and what does it mean for somebody to be sitting for, for 48 hours hearing maybe three notes being played and all these, all these, all these challenges that, um, it, that there's something about this time now and what people are, are creating and the collaboration that's going on that feels very, reminiscent of those, those waves of, um, of experimentation. Yeah, I think actually the collaboration is one of those things that is really exciting about this time because, uh, you know, I know artists that, that had in, in the studio several other people and they, um, they went to, you know, other places more like to be alone and, but they continue working online and, and actually open the opportunity for, for them to work with other people that are from different parts of the world that they were now working with, and it, and it, and worked pretty well. You know, it's like a, yeah, because it's like it's like when people just you only know that you have to go to work in a physical you know presence, and and you never thought that remote was possible. So now, even though we had the opportunity to, opportunity to go back physically, you know that also you could do some work remotely, and that maybe you could just go to the office twice a week, and. So, so definitely there have been some really great things about the pandemia, putting aside all the bad things that happen, but, it's, but it really um, forced us to see the world in a different way. And, uh, and explore that there is, 
we are already kind of a, the, the internet or the, all these different things are already kind of becoming a, a, an extension of our senses, almost like another, another sense that we have. And it's just, um, and, and because we have been, I think like, because we've been so like glued to the screens and all these things, I feel like uh, our, our five senses have been kind of been shrunk because like we, we don't read as long as much. We are not in touch with so many physical things and whatever. Then, and I think like this uh, pandemia for some people, it was, it was great like uh, to stop, hard stop, uh, surfing of the, high, of the very speedy wave where we travel and, uh, and find an excuse like the, to stop, get out and, and think about what, what we are doing, which um, many people got to do that. And is pretty, you know, after the original shock where we were all kind of, we don't know what's happening. Uh, then you kind of like uh, wake up and you say, okay, if I want to eat tomatoes tomorrow, I better put the seeds now because otherwise I won't be able to eat it, you know, uh, not tomorrow, but in a few weeks. So that's the um, kind of, I see that the, um, some of these things that, that we do now, it's kind of like, okay, we are gonna go back to some type of normalcy, but I, do I want these things to go back exactly the same way? Uh, probably not. And for there were many things that were not working well. And, and also, especially for many people that are not, that are in more disadvantages than, than we have, you know, many of us are very privileged in many, many, many ways. So, so it makes us also realize that not everything, not everybody has the same advantages that we have. And it just, uh, so it's like how to become more inclusive <clears throat> and um, at the same time that is, you know, exploring the different, the new sense that we, that we are trying to add to our, to our bodies and to our minds in a way, which is this duality, you know, if I may say that. Y'all, my uh, timer just went off, which is the, uh, one of the uh, cardinal rules of the long table is that we uh, have a strict timer and that the conversation ends. It may not conclude, but it ends. And um, I think I think we're gonna follow Lois's rules tonight. But on the table, nobody said anything though. <laughs> <laughs> they were, yeah, they have a lot of drawings here, lots of questions. Show what Lindsay, what Lindsay, what Lindsay drew. Lindsay drew herself. Lindsay has questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna end this live stream and then, uh, but we're gonna keep this Zoom on for a, mi a moment in case we wanna have a couple more uh, greetings between us, okay? Okay, so thanks for bearing with us tonight, um, day two, you know what I mean? Uh, tomorrow we are gonna be even more uh, crazed uh, because we're gonna be sharing a bunch of work that is uh, hot off the press as of the, the past few days. So um, join us, if you really, uh, for, the, for the work of the Serbian participants, that's what you'll want to tune into. Uh, you can watch it on, on your car, Andrea. That'll, that'll do. <laughs> no, Ani doesn't it, want him to do that. I'm not using the car much. I use a scooter. But oh, I have a phone much better, much better. I have a phone holder on the scooter. So oh my God. Okay. Very <laughs> cyborgian. Okay, thank you from the live stream audience. We will see you tomorrow night. Thank Ciao. You.